Good here with Sam Ramsbottom, the former Morton goalie, uh, currently free agent and potentially one of the worst times ever to be a free agent. I'm yeah. sure you'll agree. Definitely one of the worst times to be a free agent. I've never known anything like it. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit hectic, isn't it? Covid's kind of scuppered absolutely everything for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it kind of has. Obviously, I was expecting, obviously, from, from what obviously the gaffer Hoppy had, had said at the back end of before the, the season finished last year, that obviously new contracts were going to be offered to all the lads. And obviously, when the when the first COVID lockdown hits, kind of, obviously, everything takes a hit. And unfortunately, I was left with without a contract come the summer. Which is not ideal because you'd made plans to, to, to kind of base yourself up here in the foreseeable future, hadn't you? Yeah, I'd obviously kind of kind of made a few plans. Obviously, I was looking at, at now renting again for renting another accommodation for for next year. It's kind of just started the the initial processes of it, thinking that oh, I'll I'll be based back up in Scotland for the next at least twelve months. Obviously, was hoping to to come back up and obviously hit the ground running uh, for the start of pre season and things like that. And obviously, plans kind of changed quite quickly once I found out that I'd not obviously got a new contract. Yeah, um, and it's been so since then. It's been a bit. Nuts for you, hasn't it? You've had trials in at clubs, you've been training here, there and everywhere, haven't you? Yeah, so obviously when the when the lockdown hit originally, obviously spent a couple of weeks speaking to a couple of people, seeing what was kind of about around obviously England and Scotland and things like that, trying to obviously see if I could get something sorted pretty soon uh, without me having to worry. Uh, obviously as the, the days turned into weeks, I was kind of left wondering a little bit, had a, had a couple of interesting offers from, from further afield. Um, that I kind of I thought that I wanted to kind of pursue a career back here, um, in the hope that I could get obviously a, a decent contract somewhere. Um, obviously then went into into Falkirk and, and trained. I was with them for for five weeks. Um, obviously the first couple of weeks was was non-contact and, and things like that. And we couldn't play games. Um, everything seemed to be to be going swimmingly. It seemed as though it was it was going to be ideal for me. Obviously my, my, my girlfriend's based up in Scotland, so it was kind of ideal. Um. And then all of a sudden they they turned around and said, look, we we originally budgeted for for having three keepers. Um, obviously the money we, we we can't do that. We obviously need two keepers. Obviously they wanted to to bring me in. Um, and then said that the money wasn't something that was. I'm not obviously going to talk financially what they were able to offer, but it wasn't something I was able to to feasibly live on and obviously support myself and and base myself up in Scotland. It just wasn't financially doable um, with other commitments I had and things like that. So. I never talked bad about a club. They, they obviously treated me really well. Obviously allowed me to, to keep going in training for a couple of weeks and, and things like that. But obviously it was not something long term I, I could have I could have looked at. It would have been different if I was going in as, as a number one. Maybe financially it would have been worth taking taking the hit um, in order to, to get myself in the shop window and play. But when it was going into to be a number two and compete, obviously you're not looking at mass amounts of game time. Um, so to take that financial hit and obviously be away from home and things like that. It wasn't. It wasn't really doable. Um, and then obviously I'd been to been to Germany um, for for a club in the Oberliga over there. Um, all went brilliant. They they offered me the contract. They've said that the, the contract's there for me to sign. Um, just obviously they they went into lockdown at the at the end of October, um, which is now obviously continued into the new year. Um, and they're saying that they look like they could be in lockdown until until April. Uh, which ideally isn't isn't great for me because I'll be looking at almost a calendar year of not really having too much football action, which for somebody who wants to to do this as a living and as a job isn't isn't ideal. Um, so yeah, kind of pull the short straw a little bit, and obviously it's difficult being a keeper because there's only one, two, maybe three at a maximum of of people brought into into squads and things like that. So it's always it's always a difficult position to try and to try and get yourself in at. Yeah, and obviously life is a, especially in the lower leagues as well, there isn't really, like what you've, I think you've said it before, it's just in conversation, there's not a lot of security there, is there? You're, you're kind of living contract to contract, aren't you? Yeah, you, you're obviously living living kind of contract to contract, unless you're, you're obviously League One in England, you, you're not kind of getting more than a 12-month contract somewhere, which is always that kind of little bit of insecurity because you don't know what's going to happen come the summer. Come last summer, obviously, I was in a, a I found myself in a decent decent financial position before the lockdown and that, and obviously with my savings and things like that, and obviously having coached up in up in Greenock as well, and then obviously all of a sudden you you're living off your savings and things like that, hoping that 
the next day or the next day there'll be a phone call to say, look, we've we've got you a deal here or and things like that. And it obviously takes it takes its toll. Obviously, I've I've had great support from my family and obviously my girlfriend and things like that who've who've all looked after me really well. And obviously, I can't. I, I've got no complaints. Obviously, they've they've done brilliant for me and allowing me to to pursue something that obviously I, I'm I'm desperate to to continue on with. Yeah, um, and I think. It, I think the whole COVID situation does just sum up the, the, the side of football that people don't see because they just think it's glitz, glamour and cars and money, don't they? Yeah, people people seem to think that it's all uh, high-end design, design of fashion trips to, to Dubai and Vegas and things like that. People don't see the kind of thing that where I'm 24 and kind of looking at trying to, to build my own future and, and obviously get a house and things like that. And People don't see that kind of thing where you're, you're living off savings and, and having to, to work or jobs here and there to, to tide yourself over. And it's something I've done in the past and I'm used to. But obviously, it's not what you, you want to be doing. Obviously, the goal is a, a nice three-year contract somewhere where you've got a little bit of security and you can kind of think you know what's coming in, you know what's going out. But obviously, you're kind of living in a, in a dreamland, especially now. You're a lucky guy if you if you sign to a, a two, at least a two-year contract, even a year contract within a year lucky to be signed on for so it's it is what it is especially with everything going on obviously people's lives are more important and, and things like that so you can't really be 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 too um too hard on it but you, you obviously a lot of people have lost their jobs due to due to the pandemic and things like that so you can't really be too down in the dumps about it yeah um but there's also um there's been a big there's been a big mental impact to that hasn't there all the stresses of the lockdown and then obviously looking for a club you've you, you've taken a big no so much financial hit but you've also taken a, a big big mental hit haven't you yeah it's uh it's it is tough you, you're kind of sitting there waiting every day for for the phone to ring and you just like kind of you never know when it's going to go and you never know where it's going to be that's another thing you're just kind of sitting and waiting it's it's probably myself personally is the hardest thing for me because it's kind of out on the control. I know what I can I can deliver when I'm on the pitch. Um, I kind of know obviously what what I'm capable of and what level I'm capable of playing at. And just you, you're kind of waiting for that for that opportunity. And it's a bit like when it's when it's out, especially you know myself personally, when it's out of out of my control, it's one of the hardest things for me to me to deal with. And it's what it is. You you kind of you kind of having to to get used to it day by day and keep yourself ticking over. And obviously, now obviously looking for looking for work, not normal as people would put it, normal work. So obviously keep you keep yourself financially above water. And then obviously, you you kind of trying to keep yourself fit and obviously ready and sharp and keep yourself keep your eye on the ball and things like that. And obviously not let your standards slip, which is something I'm I'm kind of I'm doing two sessions a day like running and do I've got obviously I was lucky that while during the lockdown I set myself up a gym uh, in my garage so I can I can kind of keep myself taken over um, and that and that helps with the mental side of it because it kind of gives you a little bit of a break and kind of lets you evaluate stuff and know you're still working on on, on your craft and what you want to do but obviously it's it's a little bit difficult when you see your, your boots and your gloves sitting there and you're kind of thinking you're watching the games roll through on a, on a Saturday at three o'clock and you're thinking god I wish I was I was walking out on that pitch and you, you get you get jealous of a lot of people, and you think that God, like I wish I was in their position. But here's what it is: it's the the mental side of it. And I'm lucky enough to work with a with a mental coach who obviously helps me deal with all this and things like that. He's he's been a great great help for me for the past couple of years. A guy called Paul Hamill, I can't can't recommend him highly enough. He's uh, he's always been great for me, um, just helping me deal with with things, whether it be moving away or dealing with issues on the pitch and things like that. He's been work maybe for God five, six years. But obviously you, you sometimes sit in, in the dark room and you can't sleep and you think, God, is this is this my career? Is this what I wanted? And you kind of look at other people who are the same age as you and think, God, what other people have achieved and things like that. Have you considered like as you just from what you, you were saying there at the end, have you maybe considered like calling it a day? There has been times. I'd be wrong if I said I hadn't. Um, but you kind of think you're only only half a season or twelve months away from getting something decent or achieving something you want. So it's kind of like, do you do you push on with it? It's you you kind of six one half a dozen of the other. Or what you think about that? But isn't it like only 
only 24 and like gee, a keeper can play till they're 40 you know what I mean mm. it is but other things in life kind of take precedence when you kind of think well do I commit to something where I've got obviously nothing in, in life secure and you've got kind of no job security anywhere especially now but you're kind of thinking do I do I look at, at, at potentially doing something else it, it kind of it is what it is Aye. or do I kind of drop to drop to part time and, and play part time and look at, at work and a career as well you just you just kind of don't know if that thing of, of not of the unknown I'd love to have a crystal ball and say oh five years time I'll be looking back at this interview and go oh well when I was talking about potentially retiring and, and now I'm obviously enjoying a career where I've played another 200 odd games and played at a decent level it was never kind of about how much how much money I can earn and, and things like that it was just kind of about living living comfortably and achieving some th- stuff that as a kid you, you think you're capable of of course um and i mean obviously you said you've been able to let's set up a gym in the garage and stuff like that and keep yourself going two sessions a day but you've not actually been able to like get out in a park and i have a bit like a, no. a loony, try to save a ball for god knows how long either <laughs> Well, I, I have and I haven't. I've probably been doing probably two, two, three goalkeeper sessions here and there, um, just to, to keep myself ticking over. I've got a, a, a good close group of mates who are from round here, and a couple of them are goalkeepers. A couple of them who just play play some league, who are who are just wanting to to train and, and keep themselves sharp. Obviously, while their um, while their season's on on kind of hold. So, obviously, I've been quite lucky in that. Um, obviously, planning it around like their their work schedule my own kind of studies and things like that to, to try and just keep ourselves ourselves sharp. Obviously, you've got to adhere to all the, the government guidance and things like that, so it's, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes, but you just kind of, kind of got to do what you've got to do to try and keep yourself going. It has been hard to do that, but with all the restrictions, though, hasn't it? Like, unless, yeah. you're, unless you're in with a club, it's, it's near on impossible. Mm. Kind and of and no one's really, no one's really going to let you in to train with a club because everybody's too worried about the social bubbles and things like that. And if they get a COVID case, say if they were to allow someone in to train, and they they catch a COVID case, then it's you just cause a, a massive issue for them. So I was obviously lucky that that Falkirk allowed me to to train for an extra probably I think it was about two and a half weeks before I first went to Germany. Um, so I was lucky with that, and it, it kept me obviously sharp for for going to Germany and hitting the ground running. Um, but just obviously things transpire differently with obviously this you, you can't control what's going on in the world right now. No, definitely, definitely not. Um but I mean the way that the way that you're speaking about it of like players have maybe not been offered contracts because of finances and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be a lot of players in a similar position who've fallen through the cracks and there's not really like any support there for them, is there? No, there's there's kind of not. Obviously, you you're a member of obviously the PFA and things like that. Um, but when you when you kind of fall through, fall through the cracks, as you say, it's a bit it is difficult because you you're constantly looking at, at looking for recommendations from people to to get you in at clubs. You're looking at contacts that your agent knows and contacts that other people know, and it's a bit like you you're constantly looking for a recommendation to to try and get get your name out there and, and keep your your name active because otherwise it just you just end up fading into the distance and, and nobody really takes note obviously there's there's things that obviously i've been looking at to, to try and get myself my name out there and obviously keep my keep my name going i know my agent's trying to work hard and obviously we, we were obviously disappointed that germany went into a lockdown obviously i'd have been back over there playing now um but it's just you, you kind of like do you do you hold on and wait till, till obviously the football gets get going back over there I've already obviously missed from what October, November, December, January. So I'm looking at missing almost twelve weeks of football, um, and you just kind of like do what what you stuck between the rock and a hard place. You you look at other things, and it's just it's it's one problem after the next. You you're trying to get visas or trying to get yourself into a country because uh, for a time that obviously flights from the UK were banned to, to so many different countries. You are just constantly looking at everything changes everything day. You wake up and you, you don't know what's going to happen. It's just that the world we're obviously living in at the moment. No, you couldn't yeah. have expected this twelve months ago. No, no, not at all. I think what twelve months ago we were sitting preparing to go and face <sighs> Allah or something like that, wasn't it? So Yeah, probably probably Allah were away or something like that. Yeah, it's been a long right. time since then, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh man. But yes, yeah, it's, it's not been it's it's not been Easy in the slightest at all, has it? It's an uphill, uphill struggle the full way along. 
definitely. It's it is kind of like you you think to so I think back to, to obviously March when the season was put on hold at, at first, and obviously I managed to get home and spent a couple of days at home. And then obviously we we went back up to Greenock to obviously train for for another couple of days and things like that before the the league was finally obviously stopped. And you just kind of think that we've been obviously trying to keep ourselves going because we didn't know what was happening and then obviously we, we got told that it was it was finished for the for the season and that and you think that I've been trying to obviously keep on top of my fitness since probably what you're looking at May probably May June so you're looking at probably five six months and it's a bit like you just it's just a sense of normality of obviously training every day and games of a Saturday and you just want that that kind of regularness regularness back in your life um, but it is it is what it is. I can't. People have lost their lives. I can't really sing "Oh Poor Me" because people have have lost loved ones, and that's the that's the most important thing. That like a, a job's a job. If if I don't get one in football, or if I don't carry on with football, I'll have to work. And obviously, that that is what it is. But I'd rather. I'm, I'm lucky enough. I've, I'm lucky enough. I've not obviously lost anyone through through COVID or anything like that. So I've I've got to count my blessings in other ways. Yeah, of course. Um, and I think just to just to because I think we spoke about this previously. Like when you were at Morton, you kind of feel feel as if you not that you didn't get a fair shot, but people didn't get to see the best of you. You kind of you regret that, don't you? Yeah, I do. I feel as though they they probably didn't get to see the see the best side of me. Obviously, I I dealt with a, a couple of issues before. I was I was obviously signed for Morton, um, a couple of personal stuff and and things like that. Um, and then. Obviously, I I probably didn't come into into pre season in the in the best possible shape that I could off off the back of that. Um, and then obviously I I obviously started the season. I felt as though I was starting to to hit a little bit of form um, before obviously the the Hibs game. Um, I feel as though I I didn't so some performances I feel as though flew flew a little bit under the radar. Um, and I think I think things like that went a little bit unnoticed. Um, but it, it kind of is what it is. You you kind of sometimes the the performances obviously when we weren't performing great. Obviously goalkeepers take a lot of flack for it, and not rightly or wrongly. You, you don't know. It's it's the nature of the beast playing in goal. You're only one man stood there. Um, obviously I, I wish I'd obviously put in a, obviously something that fans would have obviously cheered and, and been happy about. But it, it is what it is. Sometimes it, it's not to be. Obviously I enjoyed my time there. Obviously, I wish I'd have, I'd have played a lot more games. Obviously, I think I played 13, 14 games in total or something like that, um, which was which was good. It was a good experience for me. Um, but just obviously, I, th- I wish I'd obviously played more. I think especially the second time I came into the team uh, after the Partick Thistle game, I obviously thought I'd, I'd hit a decent stride of form and was starting to, to try, show probably the, the true form that I was able to produce. And I think probably another five games and it would have been, I'd have been, Fine, and everything would have been plain sailing. But it was what it was. People have their uh, have their opinions, and, and managers make decisions for what they believe is best for the team. So I can't really, I can't really stand and stand here and, and chastise about it. I know, obviously, the manager would have had his own opinions back then, and 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 that's fine. Obviously, I I took it on the chin and, and kept working hard every day, kept my weight on point, kept my training on point, and and done the extras I needed to do. So I can't I can't have any complaints. I know. Once uh, when I left Morton, that I had I'd left no stone kind of unturned in, in what I'd done and, and the, the performances I'd put in. I'd always put my my efforts in. I don't know whether that transpired to to people, but I know I always <clears throat> put 100 percent into no matter what I was kind of doing. So I know I've, I I leave with I left obviously with no kind of oh I wish I'd have done this. Obviously I wish I'd have played better in in certain games and and made better decisions or whatever. But that that comes from being a, a young keeper still. Um, and obviously, you, you want to do the best you can, but I know I leave with kind of no, no um, reservations about the things I've done or, or things like that. I know I've got no regrets about it, really. Yeah, um, and I mean, at the end of the day, you've got a 24 year old goalkeeper and you've got mm-hmm. a master over about 100 games, am I right? Nearly, nearly 100 really? games. I think I'm just, just shy of 100 games. So, positive to think of that. Not many, mm-hmm. not many, not many goalies at that age of that. Experience under just, belt. just not got any in this season yet. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can laugh about it. If you can't laugh about it, there's a problem. Yeah, but no, like not many people, not many keepers of that age have that up, no. the, up their sleeve to, to, to say to clubs. No. You've, you've been there, you've played in, you've played men's football. You've you've not been mm-hmm. caught up in that reserve bubble like some of the other ones no. have. 
No, played almost what well, played fifty games in the Conference North. Obviously, the National League, uh, Republic of Ireland, and things like that. So it's it's kind of a well 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 travelled career at the at the minute. Um, but it is what it is. I'd, I'd go anywhere to to kind of get a game in and obviously keep my name my name active and and keep myself pushing forward because end of the day it's what I what I want to do for my career. So I've got to do what I've got to make the sacrifices I've got to make. Kind of normal.